The world is hurting and desperately in need of a savior. Let's take the word of faith and hope to every nation and transform the world. This is the vision and mission of Team International. For more information, contact us at www.teamministriesinternational.com. This day, I want to share a message I've titled Power in the World. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It's a familiar scripture, but sometimes which is not applied in the right manner. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the entrance of your word. has got the power to transform our lives and to take us from one level of glory to the next. I pray that as the word comes. Let it give your people clarity or purpose. That they will step into new dimensions of faith and glory and honor. And at the end of the day, give you all the glory. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. The word of God is a manifestation of his will, power, and glory. If you want to fulfill your destiny triumphantly, you must learn to use your words intentionally to achieve your purpose. You know, the problem is not the crisis that you're facing. The problem is the way you think. The way you think is going to determine the way you talk. And the way you talk is going to determine the way you act. When actions are consistent, they become a habit. When habit is developed, it becomes character. And when character is fully formed, destiny is better. So the truth is you where you are because of the way you've thought and because of the things you've uttered. I want you to know that there is no perfect world. There is no perfect marriage. There is no perfect business. There is no perfect church. There is no perfect way of life. All that is consistently consistent is the consistency of the word of God. The perfect word of God makes imperfect marriages perfect. The perfect word of God, word of God makes imperfect society perfect. If you want to see revival in your society, you want to see revival in your town. If you want to see revival in your life, then you must apply the word of God. You can't say, I'm applying the word of God. The word of God must become flesh in you. The word of God must have the ability to become one with you. When your thought pattern, when your actions, when your words are inconsistent with the word of God, it simply means you are not in agreement with the word of God. You can build your world with the word of God. That means if the word of God tells you, you know, the the problem I have with Christians and believers, you know, you have to be consistently consistent with the word of God. Many of you, you have problems because you, you, you think that people don't believe me. People don't believe me. I am not prepared to believe someone who says something today and is doing something tomorrow. That is not consistency. If you know that people don't love you, if you know that people have problems following you, if you know that people are talking bad things about you all the time, instead of getting angry, look at yourself. What values do you project? There is nobody in the world that does not like good things. If you are good, good people will come to you. Bad people will come to you. Other people will come to you. If you are good, when people give a feedback, they are going to say good things about you. But if you are bad, my God, your very secret is going to be exposed. So everything that pertains to life and godliness is in your hands. You talk about, I want to make the society good. You talk about, oh, you know, the leaders are corrupt. This is, this, this is corrupt. The, but, but the truth is, if you want to see changes in your society, you have to change yourself first. Hypocrisy is talking about people when your life is in a mess. 
Your life can't be in a mess and you're looking at the mess in other people's life. I don't spend time talking about people. I spend time focusing on myself because I know that if I can develop myself with the word of God, I can change my situation. I can change outcomes. I can change destinies, the destinies of nations. I can change the things that I need to change. One man can change a nation. Imagine if we all are consistent with the teachings of Tim. There's going to be revival in this country. But sadly, you get the message, then you do your selective thing. The halo halo syndrome. Oops, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. You can't like blessings and reject righteousness. I am more comfortable preaching to unbelievers than believers. Sometimes. Because with an unbeliever... An unbeliever is going to acknowledge the fact that I was blind, but thank God I see. But we believers, you are living in sin, but, but there is definitely no condemnation for those who are in right way in Christ Jesus who walk not after. You, you stop the scripture that there's definitely no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, but you don't want to complete the scripture that tells me those who walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. That means you may condemn yourself when you start walking in the flesh. Because God is not the one who is going to condemn you. Your actions will condemn you. The condemnation is not coming from God. Actions have consequences. Words have consequences. You can confess the wrong things and say, God, why aren't you giving me the right things? You are ensnared by the words of your mouth. Your life is in hell because you've confessed hell around you. Some people, you can't stand them. You stand with them for 30 minutes. You are polluted because all you hear from them is trash. Say things that can build lives. Say things. In as much as I love jokes, sometimes the most dangerous people in the world are jokers because they don't know when to stop joking. You can't joke yourself into righteousness. Because the Bible tells me that every word you utter will be used against you. And the Bible makes it clear. Every man will give an account of himself. And when words are many, no matter how righteous you are, when words are many, sin will not be absent. God, your manufacturer, the author and finisher of your destiny, says, be swift to hear, but be slow to speak. Someone says, but, but, but why am I talkative? Please. No one is going to stop you from talking. But before you talk, think. Hallelujah. Is someone getting convicted? The word of God is powerful and it is what gives us an inheritance. Everything you want to inherit in life is in the word of God. The Bible tells me in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32. And now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. Which can build you up and give you an inheritance. The word of God is the word of grace. What is grace? An unmerited favor. What is grace? It is a defined. What is grace? It's wrapped up in love. What is grace? It is intentional. What is grace? It is progressive. What is grace? It is productive. What is grace? Grace is the totality of the will and intent of God. And it is the word of God that can build you up. The bodybuilders go to the gym and every day as they walk in private and in secret, when they come out, you see the biceps all grown, all big. No one's going to tell you through prophetic intent that this guy is a dedicated Bodybuilder. 
But when you spend your time eating away your destiny, you are over big. And you can't do anything. I'm not looking down on people who are big, but I'm just warning you, don't eat yourself to death. We do not live to eat. We eat to live. I eat because on this planet, I need the nutrients and the vitamins and the things that the food can offer me to live. But if I have my will, it's going to be different. Some of you, you make eating a lifestyle habit. Your cholesterol level is high. Continue to eat. Then you take all these crazy sodas. Then the moment they pray for you, you're out of it. You go back to the same thing. Wake up from your lifestyle that's not disciplined. Life is a discipline. Any preacher that tells you, just enjoy yourself, just enjoy yourself without discipline, is a preacher that's going to lead you to hell. There is a time for everything. There is a time for you to work hard. There is a time for you to sleep. There is a time for you to enjoy yourself. But don't make an entire lifestyle enjoyment. Your life has to be balanced. Your life has to be intentional. People tell me, Bishop, you are too serious. Is the devil unserious? That's a question you need to ask of yourself. Because you've not been praying. How many believers died in the Republic of the Philippines? This is what happens to unserious people. Paul was a serious man. Elijah was a serious person. Jesus went about doing good every day. He was serious. Abraham was serious. All the patriarchs and matriarchs of the faith were serious. The Bible was written so that we can imitate them. Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. What have you gained from being unserious? You fall sick. Gossip left and right. They say things that ain't right. Look at the state of your society. This is what happens when a nation is not serious. In my nation, hospital institutions cannot meet the demand of the population due to the corruption of the government. That's one of the wealthiest nations in the world. But not the church. The Nigerian church is a serious church. We don't have the vaccine, but we have the word of God. And the man of God declared and they prayed. You COVID, we have identified you in our country, but you ain't going to stay in this place. I was just checking the COVID situation and I saw zero cases. Because people can speak. You know how many people have died in this country? When believers should be, oh, but, but you know, I, I can't come to church. It's not safe. But I saw you in the mall. You're such a hypocrite. I can't come to the church, but I saw you campaigning. That's why it's so difficult. The aspirants are asking me support. I said, I don't want to support any of these aspirants. Maybe some of you should even lose so that you take God serious. Anything that you will not take serious, God is going to take it from you. You can't say I'm a politician. Then at the end of the day, people say, um, we believe this. Me too. You go to this group, we believe this. Me too. Anybody who changes his words. Anyhow. Especially under pressure. Is not fit to be a leader. And such a person is not a reflection of godliness. Godliness is consistency with the word of God. Look at why there is so much crisis in this nation. You hear a new message from the U.S. or you hear a new message anywhere in the world, you start preaching it. Prosperity message, me too. G12 message, me too. Grace message, me too. This message, me too. What is your message? Every preacher must have a message from God. 
The Bible says there was a man who came from God. Who came from God. His name was John the Baptist. He came. They said they tried to confuse the destiny of John. They tried to give him another word. They said, who are you? Are you prophet Jeremiah? No. Are you prophet Elijah? No. Who are you? John the Baptist declared. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. And I'm telling you, prepare the way until you have a message from God. God can never use you to transform nations. If you keep copying messages from people, you will never be anything. I came to this nation. God gave me a message of faith and leadership and integrity. I have not changed the message. If you want to run with the vision, run with the vision. One moment is this message. One moment is this message. One more, Like a weed tossed to and fro. What do you stand for? I speak to all the preachers in this country and all the pastors of team. From now on, if you are not going to preach the message and the commission God gives to this ministry, resign and leave team. Because when the vision begins conflicting, the flock is going to be confused. The Bible says, let every tree produce after its kind. As for me and my house, we are for signs and wonders. As for me and my house, we are for miracles. As for me and my house, we are for healing. As for me and my house, we are for the transformation of this nation. It is not that God cannot heal. It is because we have limited God with the words we speak. God is not going to entrust his healing power upon you when you are like this. What do you believe? The words of Job was never changed. You've lost everything, curse God and die. But what did Job say? He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. I believe in team we will produce the best politicians that Philippines ever know. I believe in team we will produce the best businessmen that Philippines ever know. I believe in team that will produce the best lawyers that the Philippines ever know. But we have to be consistent. We have to be consistent. You know, I'm in a hurry to hand over the leadership. But you're making my job so difficult. Because the last thing I want to hear is that, Bishop, your pastors, they love you, but they, 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 they're not preaching like you. Team pastors, don't be foolish. If you don't run with the commission God has given me, you start preaching a strange message, you will lose the sheep. Because the sheep that I have raised by the grace of God, they know the truth. So if you move away from the truth, they will not follow you. You preach a, strong, a strange doctrine, they will not follow you. You preach all about things that are contrary to the Bible, they will not follow you. The team members worldwide that I have raised, they are the Berean Christians. They know the truth. So if you want them to follow you, all the pastors of team, you must follow the truth. It's so easy. We cannot lie to people. You know, for generations and generations, we have had messages from the throne room of God. Every message that God gives to you must be tested. Every word you receive will be tested. The more you receive, the more you are going to be tested. I'm not standing here out of convenience. Everything I believe has been tested. If I say I want to preach holiness, God is going to test my holiness. I have been tested. I'm not perfect, but by God's grace, I'm standing. Everything you believe will be tested. If you say you believe in divine healing, you, you are going to be tested with a situation of sickness and this staring at you to see what you are going to do. You're going to be tested if you believe in God's supernatural abundance. You're going to be tested. If you believe in God's elevation, you're going to be tested. But please, be firm to the end. You cannot stand, you cannot stand the way you ought to stand if you have a faulty doctrine. Your entire Christian faith must be based on the foundation of the word of God. I'm surprised that we are still talking about righteousness. When is our lifestyle?
Temptation is not sinful. It is what you do with the temptation. After Jesus fasted, what happened? He was tested. The temptation is not the sin. You say, but, but Bishop, I'm having all those crazy thoughts. Sometimes those thoughts come to me, but I cast, like the Bible tells me, casting down every imagination. What do you do with imagination? An imagination tells you, I think you should go sleep with that brother or sleep with that sister or steal such an amount of money or hate this person or kill this person. What do you do with imagination? You cast it down. Your imagination tells you nobody loves you. You tell your imagination, uh, Sarah Ulo imagination, I want to talk to you that God loves me. And one with God is what? Majority. The time has come where you must find comfort in the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is good. The word of God is great. If you are looking for happiness, your wife is not going to produce that happiness. Your daughter or your son is not going to produce that happiness. The happiness must come from within. Because if you carry the spirit of joy, joy will produce happiness. The word of God can make you happy. The word of God can make you prosperous. The word of God can make you great. You are pursuing greatness. Greatness is not outside the word of God. When you know the word of God, it makes you great. If you're looking for success, it's not outside the word of God. When you know the word of God, it's going to grant you success. The Bible tells me, blessed is he that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, not sit in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers that shall bring forth his fruit in his season. And whatever he does, prospers. Women wake up from childishness. Oh, my husband didn't compliment my hairstyle, so I decided to divorce him. Wake up. Come on. Wake up. Your destiny is tied to the word of God. Your destiny is sustained by the word of God. The word of God gives you an inheritance. The more word you study, the, more, the stronger you become. There is nothing that you cannot achieve, Bishop Cardin, with the word of God. But I bet there is nothing in this world that God has given you as an inheritance that you cannot achieve. You don't need all the money to do it. All it takes is the word of God. There was a deep darkness upon the face of the earth and God was not moved by the darkness. He kept speaking light, 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 and there was light. If there is darkness in your life right now, keep speaking light and the life of God is going to flow through. I speak into your destiny that light is coming to your home. Home. Light is coming to your business. Light is coming to your marriage. Light is coming to the Republic of the Philippines. Is there someone in this place under the influence of the sound of my voice? And maybe your business is going down. Maybe your hope is going down. Maybe your health is going down. I came with the word of God like fire in my bones. That healing is taking place right now. Deliverance is coming right now. Power is coming right now. Wherever you are everyone that has been sentenced to death by demonic powers and demonic orchestration by the mystery of the world of life I declare that life is coming truth is coming freedom is coming power is coming touch two people tell them this is my time I'm stepping into power if you believe that shout hallelujah The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Parents, you want your children to be great? Stop cursing them. Because any man who carries the authority of God carries the life force of God. And if you are cursing your children by saying all those bad things, they are going to become like that. You're wondering why my two daughters can do everything and anything. You're wondering because there's not been one day that I said anything negative to them. 
And I will never utter anything that's negative. The words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. If your business is dying, keep speaking life. If your hope is dying, keep speaking life. If your faith is dying, keep speaking life. The word of God is your vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin infinity. Keep speaking until something happens. Anytime God tells you to do something impossible, people are always going to ask you, how can this be? How can this be? All my life, I've been referred to as a crazy person. You look into my eyes and say, this man is not normal. I never said I was normal. You can't have faith and live in faith and live a normal life. What is normal about God told us that we have to build this place. And this place is costing hundreds of millions of pesos. And we didn't have that money. And a crazy flock of Christ, crazy in quote, because that's what they say. When you're doing things that are, are mind-blowing. And the leaders. But today, look at what God has done for us. Look at what God. Look at what God has done. If God tells you to jump, you say, God, how high do you want me to jump? Because the word of God is always going to protect you. You want to see transformation in this nation? It has to be the word of God. Psychology is going to fail you. Everything you study is going to fail you. Now, let me tell you the three most dangerous professions in the world. You want to know? One, political science. Two, law. Three, journalism and mass communication. The, the lawyer is going to ask you why, if this is this, why is this like this? The political scientist is going to play with your mind. The journalist is always going to look for facts, even when you pre present the truth. No, no, I want proof. I want proof. I studied mass communication. I'm a graduate of political science. I studied law. But I threw everything into the trash can. Because if I'm going to bring, if I'm going to bring logic to the word of God, if I'm going to bring what the political science taught me, if I'm going to bring what the law profession taught or what mass communication taught me, I won't be preaching. I took my degrees and I threw it to the trash can. I said, I don't want to use this. I am forced to choose between you and the Bible. The Bible is above all. Some of you, you are not being wise. I won't listen to Pastor so, 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 and so because he's not a graduate. Peter was not a graduate. The apostles were not graduates. They were called unlearned men. But they had the word. Any man who has the word of God is a spiritual graduate. I don't care about the degree you have. If you have your doctorate and you don't have the word of God, you are a spiritual illiterate. You need to go back to the word of God. The word of God has life. It's going to lead you to the place that you want to be. John chapter 6 verse 68. For Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know, someone is dying. They told you that you need to pray for this person. What words do you think you're going to release? Your words, the words that we speak, they are spirit and life, and they produce eternal life. Proverbs 15.4 A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Matthew 12, 34. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. So that's why it's very, very dangerous to joke anyhow. Because every idle word you speak, you'll be made to give an account. Words have tremendous power and consequences. 
they can build people and nations or destroy them. Therefore, any person who desires to succeed in life must always begin with the word of God. God first should be your dominant philosophy. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning, say in the beginning. In the beginning. If you want your end to be good, make sure that your beginning begins well. If you want your end to be productive, begin it well. If you want your marriage to be productive, begin it well. If you want your business or your career or education to be productive, begin it well. Always stand on the authority of God's word. God was able to do everything effortlessly because he began everything with the word. Jesus began his ministry and ended his ministry with the word. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was, and there was, and there was. Now, which, which spirit do you carry? The Spirit of God? Is it possible for you to carry the Spirit of God and make a pronouncement without it coming to pass? It's not possible. Because the Bible tells me that in him we live. In him we dwell. In him we have the totality of our being. If Christ, the hope of glory, if Jesus, the hope of glory resides in you, that means your words must be his words. And when you speak his words backed by the God kind of faith, you will see results in every spectrum of your life. I prophesy into your destiny that from this moment, the word of God is going to produce life to you and your family. The word of God will give you an inheritance. Everything you have desired will come to pass in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life and I cast down the spirit of fear. And I declare that no spirit of fear will manifest in your life further in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that every handwriting of the evil one, every handwriting of failure, every handwriting, every enchantment, every divination, every spell against you shall come to naught in the mighty name of of Jesus. You want to go far, you want to do great exploits, get the realities of Psalm 119 verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. If you are always being pushed around by sin, it simply means the word of God has not taken root in you. Feed yourself with the word of God and it will fight your fears. It's going to fight your temptation and sinful conduct in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 119 verse 9. How can a young man cleanse his ways? Young people, listen. How can your ways become prosperous? How can you become everything you want to be? How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. By taking heed according to the word of God. How can your marriage be successful? But taking heed according to the principles of the word of God. Some women come and they say, I want my marriage to be good. Okay, fine. It's easy for God to do it. But God is saying, follow my principles. No, no, no. I don't want his principles. I want my way. Your way is going to be highway to hell way. My way is a highway to hell way. You must always follow the word of God. I've counseled many people in many marriages. But one thing I found is this disobedience, rebellion, and disobedience. They told Jesus, they said, Moses said, if someone divorces his wife, he needs to give a certificate of divorce. And what did Jesus tell them? He said, it was not so from the beginning, but because of the hardness of your heart, this clause came in. What was not so in God's perspective shall not be so in your life. There shall be no option B in your life. You will always walk in the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Keep obeying the word of God. You know, God knows all things. If it's my Lord, I say, okay, Bishop Tony came out with his law to favor him. Politicians will always create laws that will favor them. 
But God is no politician. God is not a racist. God is neither white nor black nor brown. God is God. And his word is applicable to all people. That means if you take the word of God serious, you will move from glory to glory. The word of God is going to take away depression from your life. The word of God is going to take away headaches from your life. The word of God is going to give you wisdom. The word of God is going to give you health. The word of God is going to inspire you into all greatness. I prophesy into your destiny that greatness is coming your way. Goodness is coming your way. Mercy is coming your way. Life is coming your way. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 17 tells me, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. There is nothing wrong with the message of grace, but any message of grace that is not founded on truth will not sustain you. Some are running with the grace message without the truth. Grace without truth is catastrophic. Yes, God is not going to condemn you as a believer who believes in him and you've given your life to him. But on the condition that you are like Jesus. Do you understand? Grace came to make you like Jesus. The Bible tells me that the grace of God has appeared to all men. What did grace come to do? Teaching us to say no. To what? Teaching us to say no to what? So why are you preaching grace when you are saying yes to sin? You're confusing yourself. You see, this is why people don't accept the grace message the preachers preach. Because they say it's fake. Because if you say, I was a drunkard and God set me free. Not by my own righteousness, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. The same God that set me free from addiction, the same God that set me free from alcoholism is going to set you free. That message makes sense. They will say, he did it for Bishop Tony, he did it for Bishop Cardin, he will do it for me. But if Bishop, sorry if I call a random name. If Bishop David comes and says, God has set me free from this through the grace. And every night, Bishop David is still with prostitutes. Who is going to believe that message? Who is going to believe that message? So don't preach a message that people are going to reject. You see, anytime you sleep, you are at the mercy of of God. Every time you sleep, you are in a mini state of death. And the one who owns your breath can allow you to come back, wake up, or can take you home. And this thing happens every day. Why do you want to gamble with your life? You know, the devil is going to tell you that you still have time. The night is coming. Tell your neighbor, say, the night is coming. Labor while it is day. The Lord is leading me to talk to young women. Some of you are in this place. You come, you put up spiritual faces. You are committing immorality. God is telling you, stop. Do you understand? Stop. You have been going to different churches and doing all these things. But this is a living church. This is the church of God. And the spirit of God is strong. I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you stop. Because every time we say stop, because danger is coming. A preacher went to a place to preach. Started distributing tracts. And the owner of the shop came and saw the preacher giving some of the workers um, the trap. He said, come on, get off, get off my shop. You crazy preacher. Come on, get off. Don't want you here. The preacher said, oh, sorry, sir. And he left. So he went to other places to distribute the tracks. 
as he was coming back, he saw a large crowd in front of that shop. What happened? The owner of the shop suddenly fell and died. Do not allow the world to testify against you. The darkness is real. Labor to enter your rest. It's not as if grace is not available, but some of you are too stubborn. You have grace not to do that bad thing, but you still want to do it because you are curious. Curiosity in the wrong direction kills. Find contentment with your wife. And why? Stop making it difficult for your husband. I've seen women and Christians, Christian women worldwide. You have a problem with your husband? No, you're not going to touch me. If he strays outside, it's not going to be his sin alone. It's also going to be your sin. Don't make him stumble. If nations could attain greatness through the collective will and bold declaration of the citizens fashioned into law, believers have a better platform of faith to turn their confessions into substance through the power of God. Hebrews 11, 2-3. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. How can you obtain a good testimony? Do you want to have a good testimony in your business? Do you want to have a good testimony in your relationship? Do you want to have a good testimony in your transaction? For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The visible things you see were coined by pronouncing, declaring the things that you want to see in the visible. That means all the wonders you're looking for which you've not seen is in the word of God. The word of God can create your paradise for you. The word of God can create life for you. The word of God can create goodness. Everything you're looking for is in the word. Your health is in the word. Your success is in the word. Your business, greatness is found in the word of God. The word of God can lift you up. The word of God can promote you. The word of God can protect you. The word of God can preserve you. The word of God can take you to anywhere you want to be. Please, others rely on horsemen and chariots, but we rely in the name of God. The name of God is a strong tower, and the righteous, they run into it, and they're set free. Do not be distracted from the truth. Someone is going to tell you your greatness lies by connecting with the most powerful politicians. That's not true. David said, you come against me with your sword. And you come against me with your javelin. But I come against you in the word of God. In the name of God. What name you've defied. You come against me with your weapons of war. But I come against you in the name of God. I come against you in the word of God. If you want to see giants being slain in your life and in your destiny. Keep speaking the word of God. You will see sickness bow. Keep speaking the word of God. Poverty will bow. Keep speaking the word of God. Demons will flee. Keep speaking the word of God. Every mountain in your life will bow in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the word of God into your destiny. As you step into the tail end of 2021, you will step into 2022 with power. You will step into 2022 with glory. You will step into 2022 with wisdom. You will step into 2022 with all the faith of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every conspiracy against your destiny, every altar risen against you, every enchantment risen against you, I release the fire of God. It is burning down every strange altar against you. Every army risen against you will come against you in one way and disperse in seven different ways in the name of Jesus. I make a declaration of faith in this ministry. None of you will die before your time. None of you will be a victim of sickness. None of you will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. I profess into a great army. An army that's never been seen before. Wherever you go, you will go with the glory of God. You will go with the power of God. You will go with 
the honor of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch two, three people say, I am coming out. The word of God is going to give you a good testimony before the year ends in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 33 verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The words you speak, they carry the breath of God. What happened to Adam when he was made? And God put breath upon him. He became a living being. Everything that is dead in your life. As you speak the word of God. The breath of God will come upon it. And dry bones will become an army. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. You know, the Bible calls us kings. And the Bible tells us that in the words of a king, there is what? Power. The reason the devil is running wild, going on rampage, is not because you don't have power. Because he says, Sion. This one is so strong, but he doesn't know how strong he is. You know, sometimes believers are like soldiers. They carry the greatest weapons, machine guns, full of bullets. And a gun, a fighter, you should use machine gun. You're still using knife. And the devil is just looking at you. Believe what the word of God says you are. You are the righteousness. Say righteousness. Yes, I'm not saying you should keep doing all those stupid mistakes. But the truth is, even if you commit adultery and the Spirit of God tells you pray for someone, what do you do? What do you do? Because if you go and say, you know, uh, I just committed adultery. I'm going to fast for two months, then get my power back. Then you are foolish. Which power are you talking about? Your power? Your power. Which one? <laughs> your power. Keep fasting for your power. It's going to take all your life. But when the prodigal son came back to himself, he said, I will arise and go back to my father's house. Do not allow sin to define you. Allow God to lead you. You can do nothing of your own. Without him, you are nothing. Crave for him. Seek him. Follow him. I pray because I want to know him. I read the word because I want to know him. I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because I have nothing in my head. My head is empty. But with the wisdom of God, I can do all things. I no longer live. I am what I am by the grace of God. Why struggle in the storms when you can glide through with the wings of grace? Why struggle? There is no one. Jesus said, he that comes to me, I shall by no means cast out. Anyone who is sincere and meets Jesus and tells Jesus, I cannot do it on my own. Please hold my hands. He's not going to abandon you. The Bible tells me that he'll never leave nor forsake you. I pray that everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, still struggling, you will come out of that struggle victoriously in the name of Jesus. But when you are struggling and the devil shows up, cast him out. Because you have the power. Not your power. Because it is a given power. Behold, I give you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Someone is saying, I need to be perfect to cast out demons. No. Along the journey of perfection in Christ, cast them out, you will see more victory. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now confess to yourself, say, I am righteous. I am, righteous. I am, holy. I am holy. 
I am powerful. You know, preachers, I know some of you are trying to be humble, but please don't come and use this pulpit again. Preachers, don't ever tell people, none of us is righteous before God. Don't ever say that again. When you say that, you make God a liar. He said, you are righteous. So don't come and say, no one is righteous before God. If you are not righteous before God, I am righteous. Because I am the righteousness of God. If you say no one is righteous before God, that that means Jesus died in vain. He died so that the tag sinner will be removed from your life. He died so that the tag condemned will be removed from your life. He died so that every curse will be removed from your life. He died so that every condemnation will be removed from your life. He died so that I can be free. The son of God became the son of man so that the sons of men can become the sons of God. A free man became bound so that those who are bound could be free. So don't ever in team we are righteous because we have imputed righteousness. If anybody tells you you are arrogant, Ediwal, faith sometimes sounds arrogant, but it's the truth. Are you righteous? Yes, I am righteous. I know what you did yesterday. There's definitely now no condemnation for those in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You You may have made a mistake yesterday, but I'm not walking after the flesh. I am walking after the Spirit. And as long as you are led by the Spirit, you are the sons of God. And the Bible tells me, as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And the sons of God know no condemnation. Hallelujah. Say it one more time. Say, demons in in hell, hear my confession. I am righteous. I am good. I am am blessed. I am am victorious. victorious. But never notorious. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 33 verse 9. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. From now on, anything you speak shall come to pass. Anything you command shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Timothy 4, 4 to 5. For every creature of God is good. Are you one of God's creation? For every creature of God is what? So why do you say I'm not good? Oh, but Bishop, I'm a bad person. Shut up. I am a good person. Who does bad things from time to time, which I don't like. Hallelujah. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused, if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So where is your goodness coming from? It is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If the word of God can't change your character and help you transform your community, it means that you have not applied it rightly. The undiluted word of God has the power to multiply your spiritual assets and blessings in every spectrum of life. 1 John 1-2 to That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, And our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness. And declare to you that eternal life which was with the father was manifested to us. So you declare what you have experienced. Declare your faith, not your fears. 1 John 1, 5 to 6. This is a message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. We are all sons of lights. 
So if you're the son of light, what do you do? You emit light. That's why the Bible tells me, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. If men are not glorifying God, it simply means we are not manifesting God's glory. People are attracted to what they see. Let them see the glory of God in you. Let them see the goodness of God in you. Let them see the health of God in you. And the whole world will glorify Jesus. 1 John 2, 5 to 6. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. That means the more you practice God's word, it's going to determine to what extent you love God. Okay, let's move aside for a while. Let me use this example. Women, when you are in love, you're having your, in the morning, you're thinking of what he told you. Sometimes you laugh. You know, he told me this. <laughs> what does he mean? <laughs> oh my God, this guy is so funny. And you know, how do you know that they're in love? When a lady begins to laugh, when one is talking, ah, <laughs> something is happening. Then you just go to the mirror. You, you look at yourself. <laughs> he says, I'm so beautiful. <laughs> you are doing all those things. Why? Because you are in love. You keep repeating what he told you. And it's like honey to you. Even when you don't feel like smiling, you want to smile. And the Bible tells me here that if you say you love God, you must keep his words. When you keep something, you repeat them. By this we know that your love in him has been perfected. You can repeat what your boyfriend told you. But you cannot repeat what God told you. I believe that every one God created is beautiful. But some are so short, some are so... But they're beautiful before God. So imagine a girl who is very, very short, believes that she's as tall as this because the boyfriend told her, you're the tallest woman I've ever met in my life. And she believes. And so when she begins to walk, she walks like a model because someone told her she's very beautiful. How much more God how much more God? My boldness comes from the fact that I am a, a friend of God and my Jesus, my Savior, my Lord, calls me friend. Find comfort in the word of God. Some of you trust Facebook more than the Bible. The first thing you do, you know, when there was a, a blackout on, on Facebook, People started posting, I survived the blackout. How many of them said, I survived not even reading the word? <laughs> oh my. First John 2, 5 to 6. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him himself ought to walk just as he walked. That means if you say you love Jesus, be the Jesus that your barangay needs. Be the Jesus that your community needs. Be the Jesus that your society needs. How did they call the disciples and the apostles of Jesus? Why did they call them Christians? They were first called Christians at Antioch. You know why? They said these are learned fishermen. But they are like Christ. They are like Christus. This one, I knew him before. He was full of temper. But look at him. I don't know which one is Jesus anymore. Although we killed Jesus, this one talks like him. No, no, no. This one talks like him too. This one teaches like him too. Can we be the Jesus that Filipinos are looking for? Can we be the Jesus that Americans are looking for? Can we be the Jesus that Nigerians and Africans are looking for? Be the change you want to see in your world. 
Only those who trust God fully with a deep conviction of his love, grace, and faithfulness will reap the positive harvest of their confession of faith. What do you want to reap towards the end of the year? It's all in your hands. Hebrews 6, 11 to 12. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Imitate the patriarchs and matriarchs who inherited the promises through faith. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of God to you. Was faith follow considering the outcome of their conduct? 2 Corinthians 4.13 And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Articulate your convictions. Then in conclusion, 2 Kings 4.15-17 So he said, this was the prophet speaking, so he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. Today I stand and I make a declaration into your destiny. I declare that every one of you, by the time we do our crossover service, you will be giving testimonies upon testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Every mountain will be brought low in your life. Every valley will be exalted and the crooked paths will be made straight and the glory of God in every spectrum of your life will be revealed. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is what? Faithful. Your God is faithful. Your Lord is faithful. Jesus is faithful. He will never leave nor forsake you. Stand to your feet. I don't care what I see. If God is on my side, nothing can move me. If God is on your side, nothing should move you. Today, I want you to make a commitment to God. Say, from this moment, every confession I make must produce life. From this moment, every word I utter must edify my hearers. From this moment, I will never contradict the word of God. Whatever he says, I'll do. The mother of Jesus and Jesus and the disciples, they went to Cana in Galilee for a wedding. And they said the wine got finished. And for the ancient Hebrew culture, that was, that was um, a no-no situation, embarrassing. Because the wine was significant in the Hebrew marriage. It's not just for the fun of the taste. And they said the wine got finished. They said, what do we do? They knew that Jesus was dead. They met the mother of Jesus. They said, help. And Jesus was told, but the mother told the disciples a secret. Whatever he tells you, whatever he tells you, whatever he tells you, the problem I have with some of you, God tells you to do something. Your will is always overruling the will of God. So what happened to your confession? Not my will. You come on stage, you say, Lord, not my will. Let your will be done. And it tells you, okay. And he says, do this. No, 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 Lord, I can't do it. No, no, I can't, I can't. 
That is not being consistent. There are things he's going to tell you to do that are not convenient. Believe me, he's told me many times things that are not convenient, which I accepted, but they produce the best and most convenient outcomes. From this moment, if you want to see victory, imagine he tells you, come to church, oh, the weather is too cold, Lord, I can't go. Who does that? And, you know, I'm very shocked that in this part of the world, coming to church is optional. Oh, I'll come here and five weeks' time I'm going to visit. That is how much you love God. You really think this is my church? I'm just a missionary sent to your continent. It's time for Filipinos to wake up. Every missionary wants to go back home to his country. I don't know about you, so let's not be hypocritical. Filipinos will stay in London and stay in the U.S., but they always come back home. True or false? No matter how great the Jewish person is, when they build their houses, the window is always facing the direction of Jerusalem because they want to go back home. Hallelujah. So whatever God tells you, do. So from this moment, say from this moment, I commit myself to the word of God and his testimony and whatever he tells me to do, I will do. Lift up those hands. Let me pray for you. Father, you've heard the words of your sons and daughters. The accuser therefore has no right to accuse them. I bless them and I declare that whatever they do, lead them. Wherever they go, guide them. And wherever they are, grant them victory in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord preserve you. May the Lord make you great in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 While I was praying, book of bed, God showed me this thing. I saw an empire that continued to rise. And it continued to rise. And God told me to tell you, do not be afraid. Trust me the way you used to trust me. I will fight all your battles. I will win all your battles. I will give you all the victories. And you know what God told me, Bishop Cardin, to tell you? Why are we always having battles? Because you have, God sent you to produce a Davidic generation. If you are a David, Goliath will always show up. But Goliath will always be destroyed. You will not be defeated. Your family will not be defeated. Hold on to God. During the last crisis, decades ago, it was God that gave you guys victory. And that same God is still alive. He said, I'm going to do more, much more than you experience, you've ever known. And it shall come to pass. I saw your great-grandchildren, not just your grandchildren, great-grandchildren. If Jesus tarries, they will worship God. Some will be playing music. Some, the, the passion will go. The seed has been planted. For every one of you, I declare God's greatness, God's glory, God's power, God's honor. Arise and shine, for God's glory is risen upon you. If you're watching me online and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus, this is what you can say. Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God. You died to set me free today. With my heart, I believe, and with my mouth, I confess you. Come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you've just done that, I welcome you to God's kingdom. Look for any Bible-believing church and worship. If you are in Metro Manila area, you can contact us on the address on the screen below. And if you are in any of the countries, USA, Pakistan, UK, Kenya, Nigeria, Japan, and the rest, locate any team church and worship there. May the peace of God and grace of God that surpasses all things keep you all. God bless you. 
Good day, everyone. My name is Jasmine Henry. My life has been transformed positively and continuously by Tony Mario High's messages. You should definitely check it out and make sure to subscribe to his channel.